Namaste. So this is a piece of music that I'm working on called Lavender Tears. If this is just a sketch of the main melody, but when it's done, it's going to be an orchestral arrangement with all kinds of, you know, development of the theme and all that good stuff. But I just wanted to let you hear it to emphasize the expressive power and possibilities of Vedic scales. So we're going to start looking into Vedic scales today. The Sanskrit term is tat. A tat is similar to a Western scale, but there's much more variety that's possible. So let's jump right in and get to know the terminology. The Vedic scale is composed of seven swaras. And the first one is called Shadja, or Sa for short. The symbol is S and it's Achala, it doesn't move. And the rasa that it expresses is Brahman, oneness with the all. The second swara is Rishab, or Ri for short. The symbol is R and it's Chala. It can be Shuddha or Komal, which means natural or flat. And it expresses enthusiasm. And when it's flat, it, it expresses devotion. Then number three is Gandhara, which is expressed for short as Ga, the symbol is G, and it's also Chala. It can be either Shuddha or Komal, and it expresses friendship. You'll hear it, it's very, very beautiful. The fourth swara is Madhyam, or Ma for short, symbol is M, and it's also Chala. It can be either Shuddha, natural, or Tivra, sharp. And it represents devotion to Shakti, or when it's sharp, the devotion of Shakti to Shiva. The fifth swara is Panchama, short is Pa, symbol is P. And it's achala, it never moves. The sha and the pa are always the same. And it expresses devotion to Shiva. The sixth is dhaivata or dha. Symbol is D. And it's chala, it can be shuddha, natural, or komal, flat. And it expresses compassion. When it's flat, it's extreme compassion. And finally, there's Nishada, or Ni. Symbol is N, and it's Chala. It can be natural or Komal, and it expresses desire. So, of course, this is just the introduction. <laughs> there's a lot more to this, but I don't want to overwhelm you with detail right away. First, I want you to get familiar with the Vedic scale and so that when you hear it and you see the symbols, you'll know what it is and we'll be able to talk about it. So here's the scale that we just talked about, the Vedic major scale. Gama Pada Nisa. Huh? This is the typical major scale, the Shuddha, Tata. Huh? The, every note is in its natural position. So these scales can be used to make so many different ragas. What is a raga? Well, <laughs> it's a way of traversing the scale which gives rise to a whole family of related melodies. So raga is a very deep subject, and we're not really going to get into it much here. But what I want to do is talk about how the different tatas can be used to construct very interesting and expressive musical forms. 
Now, we talked about Shuddha and Komal, or in the case of Ma, Shuddha and Tivra. And when all these are the, the chalans are made, the scale sounds like this. So you see the symbols, the S, R, G, Sariga, and so on, are capitalized when they're natural, shuddha, except for ma. Ma is lowercase when shuddha. And then the chalans are expressed in lowercase, except for ma, again, She's expressed in uppercase when she's tivra or sharp. Now, why am I using sarigama terminology uh, for the scale instead of the Western notes, C, D, E, and so on? It's because the Western notes refer to the Western system of intonation, equal temperament. Equal temperament is different from the Vedic tuning. Why? Because the Vedic tuning is always in reference to a drone. Here's the scale again with a drone. So we're going to get into this in the next episode. Uh, what is the relationship between the notes and the drone? Well, it has to do with the overtone or harmonic series. The harmonic series is part of physics. Huh? Every object has a resonant frequency. And when it's struck or otherwise made to vibrate, for example, in a flute, you have a column of air. It's made to vibrate by blowing over the flute. Or with a violin, you, have to, you can bow it and make the string vibrate. But anyway, every object has a resonant frequency. And that resonant frequency has overtones or harmonics. And they fall in a particular predictable pattern called the harmonic series. So the harmonic series is simply integral multiples of the base frequency. For example, if the base frequency is 100 hertz, vibrations per second, then the next harmonic is going to be 200, then 300, 400, 500, and so on. And this is how it sounds. So you also notice that the distance or interval between the notes are the names of the musical intervals, octave, fifth, fourth, major third, minor third, second, and so on. All the intervals of the scale are derived from the harmonic series. You see, that's why the Vedic scale has superior beauty and a much, much better effect on people because it's derived from the physical law, the, the universal law that applies to all objects from galaxies down to quarks. <laughs> so everything in between <laughs> vibrates with a certain frequency. In fact, the universe is nothing but vibration. It's a vortex of vibrations. We've covered that in other series. But what we want to talk about now is how the scale tones are derived and what is their emotional meaning. 
and how is that used in musical composition and performance. So that's enough for this time. <laughs> in the next episode, we're going to talk about these ratios, how they're different from the Western tuning and why they have such a wonderful effect on people. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung.